Hello everybody. I'm glad I got the time to show you another tutorial. I'd like to show you something that you can use daily at home doing the washing. So here's for you how to do a close pack dress or a close pack holder, bag, whatever you want to call it. I'll show you two different variations. Here's the first one done with a wooden hanger, coat hanger. This coat hanger should maximum be 30 to 35 centimeters, not any longer, otherwise it just gets too big. Look in your children's wardrobe, you probably find something like it and then you can easily put some material over or even leave it as you wish. The opening you will see later has got to be big enough to get that a coat hanger in. Here you can see I put a little bit of an apron on it for the looks, put some buttons on and whatever embroidery you got left at home you can put on the uh, neck part that you cut out. The second possibility, oh yeah, and here of course you see all the packs inside. This is the one I will show you how to make it. Um, I used a total different hanger because this is a little bit more difficult than the, the one with the wooden coat hanger. But in case if you only have some round ones like this, you will see how easy it is to do that one. As well, again, with a little apron because it should look a little bit nice with a nice round cutout and with a belt that goes all the way across the back as well. And when you open this one, of course, there are all your packs that you will need for your clothes to hang them up. All right, I'll show you how to do it. To do this clothes pack dress, you need, first of all, a coat hanger. And you make a pattern from this po um, coat hanger. Just take any old material that you got some left over, draw this exactly on, leave a little space on the bottom, cut two pieces out of this and stitch it to try it onto your coat hanger first to see if you got to alter the shape a little bit from your pattern. As soon as you've done that, you can do your first parts of cutting, which I've done here. I've cut two pieces and I stitched already some uh, other color onto the bottom so that bottom is already finished. You will see that later. You of course can also just turn it over when you want to do, but you see what I meant, how I did this. And I did this a little bit longer than the actual coat hanger is. You will also see later on why. Then again, you either need your coat hanger or your pattern that you had to draw the size and the shape of this little close pack dress that you're going to do. It's got to be wider than the coat hanger for a start, otherwise you will not be able to get the coat hanger into it later on. But this shape will be exactly to there the same. Then best is only draw one side and then flap it over so you have exactly the same on the other side. Do a little shape as if you're going into the waist and do like a little skirt cut out. How you draw this, how you do this, it's all up to your imagination. The lengths I did for this close pack dress is including the seams that I will have 41 centimeters. The rest, as I say, it's all up to you how you're going to do this. On the top where the hanger is in, it, on the actual dress you don't need to draw that, you just go across somewhere there. So after you draw one side or your pattern, you, can, you will cut two or three pieces exactly like this, exactly the same. Um, of course you also have the choice only to do two and then 
as you saw on my finished part already, as I'm putting a little apron into here, you only do like a little skirt part down here. Then you can in the beginning do exactly the same cutting as the back, exactly like. And for your seam here, you must think about uh, one centimeter each for the seam that you have to add on. And then you draw the cut out for the neck that you wish. But think about it, it's got to be quite big, otherwise you will not be able to get the hanger into it when it's finished. Besides those three parts that you cut now, if you want to put an apron in, you take your other material that you got, you cut it approximately the same width as your waist is here, and you cut it about 13 centimeters long. Then you can iron these already over on these three sides, easy to be stitched then. As well, you will need a belt part, as it's supposed to look like an apron then. You need one for the front. You don't need one for the back, but I did one for the back anyway, because then it really looks like the apron has been put around the waist. And you will need something to finish off the neck part, and that, as it's very round, should be cut sideways. You can see it here by my seam, where I added it on already, it's been cut sideways, while these are all cut straight. And that is all you need. The preparations you will find is always more than the actual stitching. The stitching is done quite fast and really easy. So we're going to do this now. We first of all start with the parts for the coat hanger. Mark in the middle where you will leave a little hole where the coat hanger, when you're finished with it, will come through. Make it, leave it big enough, you can always close it a little bit more. We added one centimeter. I prepared the bottom of this part, as you can see. You can do it later if you want to, but it's much easier if you do it first, because then all you have to do is close it on the bottom when it's finished. Nicely go with a stitch that's not too big around your curves of the form that your coat hanger had. Do a good big, uh, back and forward stitching to where you want to leave the hole. Start exactly on the other side and easily go around the curve following your cut edge one centimeter seam. Look forwards the end that you don't have one of the parts sticking over. Before you turn it around, take your coat hanger for a test, push it through the little hole, pull it over on both sides, and first of all look if that's the form you want it. As you can see here, this is quite good, but you can at any time, of course, take it out again before you turn it over and maybe stitch another millimeter away if you think you haven't really done the form so well. Then push it through the hole, turn it over, pull the edges out nicely. If you wish, you could have um, also cleaned off with your safety overlock machine or zigzag machine the inside seam first, but as I'm closing this on the bottom with my sewing machine later on when I have green on the machine, then I don't need to um, clean the inside off because if it's closed here, nothing will happen to the seam anyway. It will not open. Also what you should think of, you can make this much tighter if you wish. But this um, little cover over your coat hanger, you can also at any time do for some closing, some dress that might always slip off the hanger off. If you put an overcoat over your hanger like that, uh, the dress will not slip off anymore. And sometimes it also looks very nice to do something like that. We continue now 
by preparing the little apron that we will stitch on. I ironed the three sides over already, double over. So all we have to do now is stitch along this edge. I go a little bit lower down to really hold the corners well in as well. Go along the bottom as you ironed it over for yourself. Push over the other, two, uh, other side there. Also there I go back into the corner once again and I stitch to the top. Now put yourself a little cut for the middle into this apron part. Now put a very big stitch on your sewing machine and on about 8 or 9 millimeter stitch along the top with this big stitching that you put in. Hold by back and forward stitching your beginning first and now at the end do not cut your thread off tight. Leave it a bit longer because you're taking one of the threads and slightly pull this apron into some little mm, yeah, beads that you like to have there. Make sure not to pull too hard otherwise your thread might rip and break. You only do this approximately now because you will take the skirt part that we cut where you also have a middle cut. Put cut on cut and now pull it together for the widths as you would like to have this apron. Even it out a little bit so it's a little bit even all the way along how you pulled your widths for the apron in. Make sure not to do your seam more than 9 millimeters, otherwise later on your seam, when you do a 1 centimeter seam, might stick out. Even it out now nicely that you have on each end also the same sticking over. You can always let a little bit out. Uh, again, if, if you see that you don't have the same measurements on both ends, look for your middle cut, put this all together and now just add it onto the skirt part that you got there already. As I say, make sure not to be wider than one centimeter stitching it on, otherwise it will all show out later. Keep on evening the widths out that you have for this apron and stitch it on to the end. Now we're taking the upper part that we cut and not as you might think now the normal bits uh, the normal way would be to stitch put the right side on the right side and do the seam but as I want the inside of this uh, pack to be uh, really uh, clean off as well I will put left on left of the material, so the right side is facing towards me now. And I stitch this on by one centimeter. Look for your middle cuts, that makes it easy if you put them in before to stitch this on this one centimeter now. Make sure not to get anything under the needle under the machine that you do not want to fasten and go along all the way in one centimeter widths to the end of your material there. That's your seam so far. Clean it off and you can see on the back part now which is the inside it's all clean and tidy. Now we're taking the first stripe not the sideways cut stripe, we take the, one of the straight ones which are ironed over one centimeter already on one side but we are stitching on the part that's not been ironed over. Put it onto your seam and stitch it on one centimeter evenly, nicely all the way to the end Now 
make sure everything underneath is lying flat the way you want it. Nothing should be pulled in. And you can see the part which we're going to stitch upwards now. We're starting exactly on top of that seam that we just stitched on. Stitch it on one millimeter all the way through to the end. Just turn around. You don't need to stop there. Go just around up on the edge and stitch this part on. And your first belt part on the front is on the dress on already. That looks good so far. What's hanging over cut off. And you see a little skirty there. Now take one of the backs that you have cut and mark yourself with two little cuts the width of the belt. On this side, the same on the other side. Put all the edges together and do the little two cuts where you want to join the belt on the back part. So you take the other straight strip that you prepared. On that one you should iron it over both sides. Now you can slightly stitch it on around towards the bottom, similar to what we did on the front part, but you can also just put it on straight. That doesn't matter. But keep on looking for these two little cuts that you've done that you will get later on these two belt parts evenly on top of each other. At the end you just turn the machine around, push the part in that you ironed over and go all the way along to the end. Super, that's done as well. Now we have to do the cut out for the front of the dress. Therefore you take the stripe that you cut sideways and you stitch it on from the left side, not from the right side. If it's very sideways there on the top, you must lie this far enough over, otherwise it might not cover it when you pull it over to the right side. Now this particular seam should not be more than seven or eight millimeters wide, not a centimeter. That's always too much if you do some cleaning of edges like that. Go nicely around the curve. Do not stretch the part out straight towards you because you will stretch the neck out otherwise. Leave it lying round there and continuously bit by bit go around the curve with the stripe that you do have there. All the way to the end. Now turn it over. And it doesn't matter which side you do it from. It depends on how firm you are with sewing. You can do it from this side as I show you here. But you can also say, no, that's not really my side. I don't feel comfortable with that. Then you go to that side. Turn it over. Put the seam inside that tape that you're putting on there now. And start stitching it on evenly one millimeter on the edge you're stitching and then it's all cleaned off and tidy inside. It helps a lot when you 
iron this one part over that you're stitching on now. Of course, if you're not so firm, you can put some uh, needles in, some uh, pinning needles first, or you can go on your ironing board and totally iron it flat on. But it really works just the same if you have this one edge already um, ironed over. You will find, if you take your time, this works just as well. And it's actually a very nice job to learn this if, as you have, if you haven't done this very often. Uh, on a little item like this, you can learn this very well for later on for doing bigger jobs that you would like to do. And here you can see your front part is nice and clean inside, nicely outside. You cut the leftovers off. And that whole front part is totally finished now. Now you take one of your back parts, the one that does not have the little belt stitched on. Put this exactly on top and take the other one with a belt on and put practically belt on belt together. All three parts, the edge on top of each other and you start stitching on the bottom of the seam there one centimeter. Look right away for this belt to put it exactly on top of each other and all three cutting edges exactly on top of each other. Look for the round that you got up there. Always look far ahead. If you're not sure, put some pins in or even put some stitching by hand in first, some big ones which you can easily pull out. All depends on how good your sewing already are. There you have a little corner where you just go around. Now coming to this shoulder part, it is always nicer there if you try to stitch a little around, a little curve. Don't make it straight there. It will look much nicer when it's not so square up there because nobody's shoulder is square. So do a couple of stitches in the round. Look again that all your three edges are on top of each other. Go into this corner that you cut there and go across now. Now there you only have two pieces of material. Stop before you get to the corner because you have to put this one first nicely in there. Otherwise, if you stitch too far, you can't get that middle part in there correctly. You do a corner there, and now you're stitching towards the shoulder. O already you can look to your belt because it all is a part of going around there that it should be lying together already. Also here, do a couple of stitches around instead of uh, doing a, um, a corner. There you do a corner now where we are. Here you look for your belts again, that they're on top of each other. And you go towards the bottom of the little dress that you got there. All three parts are gotta be evenly together on the edge and you go all the way down. Now, you could go around with your overlock safety or with your zigzag, but as you will see later, this seam is totally will be totally on the inside because that is the reason why I cut three parts and not two parts. You can do it with two parts, but it makes the this little um, peg dress so much more firm if you use three materials there and, as I said, so much cleaner. Now, all we have to do is close the bottom up. You can check everything over again, that you seams are nicely there. To close this, you put your hand in the top in and you can only get through to one hole and pull all this to the left side. And there you got your three materials, which you just have to stitch together now. Of course, you start on one end. That's logical. 
one centimeter seam. You can put some uh, cut ends in the middle from those three pieces. That'll make it easy for you to just stitch first to, to the middle and then to the other end, to the other side. Keep on pulling the pieces so they're really all three edges together. Otherwise, go in again, like in my case, it slipped away a little bit. So I even it out again. So you're stitching from the side seam to the other side seam, one centimeter. Now you have to clean this particular seam off because that seam is shown inside if you would look inside. Push or rubble all the corners out nicely. Look that all this is very even. And now if you do look inside, you will see there is, besides the bottom seam, all the other seams are totally closed. Now just this little neck piece I will stitch over by one millimeter. It will um, hold better. The shoulders I will not stitch over, otherwise the coat hanger would not be uh, lying nicely inside. That you can iron a little bit if you want to. The neck you can iron flat. And now, as I said, this is much better with three parts. As you can see, this is totally clean in the inside besides the bottom seam, which you have to go over with the overlock or with your zigzag machine. And that's more or less the finished part. Now you take your coat hanger with a little cover over that you made. The hole, as I said, has got to be big enough. Otherwise, you won't get this coat hanger in. I will later on uh, close this before I show you the finished picture again of it. But I haven't got the green thread on yet, so I just leave it like that at the moment. So you put this nicely inside, pull on all the corners again, and there you go. Now all I can say is thank you for watching and hope you come around again for my next tutorial to do some nice and easy sewing for little wishes of sewing that you have. Bye bye until next time. Bye.